Despite all the insane carbon reduction efforts that the Tesla Semi will provide to the environment, there are some serious concerns we need to address when it comes to Tesla's latest product launch, which on the surface looks amazing, but underneath the surface has some serious issues. Now, the only way that we're going to be able to solve these issues is by first addressing them and actually understanding them on a very high level, which is exactly what I want to do in this video. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, let's understand the basic specs of the semi that have really shook the semi truck industry in the short term. Particularly, we have a 500 mile range on a single charge, less than two kilowatt hours of energy consumption per mile and a zero to 60 time of only 20 seconds. And obviously, because electricity is much cheaper than diesel or natural gas, the cost savings over a long period of time are going to be significant for any class 8 electric semi truck. And that is obviously something that Tesla is bloating on its website. But the thing that many people forget to consider is the upfront capital investment costs of running such a high powered class 8 truck. Well, as you all know, the limit for class A trucks in the United States, electric ones, is 82,000 pounds gross combined weight. And so if the Tesla Semi has a very heavy battery, it means that the weight that you can carry inside your trailer is going to be reduced. And this would certainly be a reason why Tesla failed to disclose the capacity of their battery and also the gross weight of the tractor itself, because that is going to play a critical role in the reason why people are going to buy the Tesla Semi is how much payload can they actually carry with that truck. It doesn't matter if they can reach that 500 mile range because any company can reach a 500 mile range if they add enough batteries to the truck. It's about how much payload can you actually carry with the advantages that the Tesla Semi provides. And guess what? The 500 mile range video that they showed you is actually quite misleading because it just shows you that the total weight of the truck is 82,000 pounds, but it doesn't show you what the weight of the truck is compared to the trailer and the payload. Because almost all Class A trucks on US roads for long haul applications run at the 80 to 82,000 gross combined vehicle weight. The number that actually matters is how much you can carry inside the trailer, which depends on how much your truck actually weighs. And this is where the big problem with battery technology really comes into play when you're targeting heavy duty issues. This is not a problem just with Tesla. This is a problem for the technology itself. If you want to add more range to a battery powered product, you have to add more batteries. There is no other way around that, which means you're going to end up eating into the cost of the payload that you can carry. And when you account for the fact that an unladen semi truck can weigh around 25,000 pounds and the battery in the Tesla semi could approximately weigh around 11,000 pounds on its own without the packs and the modules, then you really start to understand that in the long haul, some customers might not be that attracted to this Tesla semi product because of the insane weight that it holds. And when you have a battery that is 8.5 times the size of the Tesla Model S plate, you really start to understand the massive long term cost implications this could have to the supply chain. If in 2020 and 2021, we already had issues with sourcing the raw materials from making EV batteries, which skyrocketed lithium prices, then you have to understand that in the long term, every unit that Tesla sells, it's actually going to do more damage in the short term to the environment and to the economy than benefit. Now, obviously, the reason that battery pack costs have come down over the past few years is because of economies of scale and companies investing in factories. But at some point, if the actual raw material cost skyrockets, we're going to start seeing that overtake the battery pack advancements and all of a sudden see battery pack costs go up as the supply chain struggles. Now, for electric passenger cars, I don't think this is going to be that big of a problem because we have so many industry competitors already in this space. But when it comes to heavy duty class A trucks, if every single truck you add to the market is going to have 10 times the amount of raw materials that your average Model S Plaid has, then you really start to understand the exponential supply chain issues this could cause. And the idea of recycling, unfortunately, is not going to help with this use case that much because at the end of the day, only around 5% of consumer electronics batteries are recycled in the United States. So imagine what the conversion rate is going to be for electric vehicles. And simply from the fact that Tesla avoided using the 4680 cells, which are essentially a new kind of cell structure that allowed them to be more energy dense and cost effective, shows you that the idea of raw materials being excessively abundant in the lithium ion space is a complete fad. 
Lithium mining is an extremely centralized process and it takes around 15 to 20 years for a mine to become operational. So the lag time that supply has when it comes to demand is still pretty significant. And although in the next 10 years, this is likely not going to affect us too much, we have to look at this from a very long term perspective before investing in technologies at a very early stage. And that obviously does not even cover the issue of charging something like the Tesla Semi. Tesla is very adamant in saying that they can charge 70% of the range of the semi in 30 minutes. And although that sounds really great on the surface, and it's certainly possible based on the findings that Tesla has presented, it's only possible with the one megawatt charging capacity. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using a one megawatt charging station, but it is very deceiving for Tesla to point out that you can charge this vehicle in 30 minutes, not considering the fact that there's absolutely no megawatt chargers available publicly in the United States today. Instead, you need to invest multi-million dollars in building one of these charging stations wherever your facility actually is. So for long haul applications where gas stations don't have access to megawatt chargers and can't just take a 110 volt AC line to the parking lot, it really starts to not make sense. And it's not like the Tesla Semi can fit into any of the supercharging networks that Tesla has, because obviously those are built around passenger vehicles and you cannot fit a 60 foot tractor trailer in that area. And obviously if you even try charging at the standard 175 kilowatt power rating than most EV chargers in the US have, it'll take you around two to four hours to fully charge the Tesla Semi, which obviously would make zero sense for long haul trucking applications, even if you assume that most truck stops in the US have these charging ports. And when California's own grid can handle simple solar and wind resources and people using and turning their air conditioner to the max, then imagine how can it handle EV charging hubs that would take enough power to power a small town. And so the real bottom line here is that the Tesla Semi is a great showcase for what battery technology can do for the class 8 space, but it isn't necessarily a showcase of what battery technology will do for the class 8 trucking space, because there are simply way too many variables when it comes to using an electric vehicle. The downtime that you will experience charging a Tesla Semi is simply way too much, not even accounting for the fact that you're offsetting other folks that can also charge their vehicles at the same time, the time that you're consuming to charge your own. Because obviously at a diesel or natural gas refilling station, you can have multiple people charge within an hour's time frame. But the amount of trucks that can charge electrically in that one hour time frame is significantly reduced because obviously it takes more than 30 minutes to an hour to charge a selected vehicle. So yes, even though electric vehicles make a ton of sense for passenger vehicles and will significantly reduce our carbon emissions, for the long haul trucking space there is still a lot of complexities we need to figure out and technologies we need to explore. And one of the potential solutions is obviously hydrogen fuel cell technology, which even though it does not make very practical sense for low duty cycle passenger vehicles, makes a lot of sense for heavy duty applications like trucking, trains, ships and planes. And although in the short term the cost of hydrogen technology is expensive, that is not an excuse to not invest in this technology, because no technology that was adopted on a wide scale on this planet was ever cheap at the beginning. It was always expensive, infrastructure was always a bottleneck, but when a technology provides better benefits than its equivalent, then the engineering world will normally start to gravitate towards that. And right now it's clear that we're seeing that shift in the hydrogen industry for commercial adoption. Now, guys, make sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.